Let's make a line chart. A line chart is really a lot like a scatter plot. It's just that the points are connected. There was once this really neat project by Gray Area called Data Canvas Sense Your City. In this project, there were sensors in different cities for temperature, light, pollution, noise, and humidity and dust. This data set extracted from that project contains one week of temperature in San Francisco. We've got two attributes, a timestamp representing the date, looks like down to the hour, and then the temperature in degrees Celsius. My question here is, how does the temperature change over time? When you ask yourself, how does this or that change over time, typically you can use a line chart to get the answer. Here's what I'm thinking. X can be time and Y can be temperature. I'm going to get the raw URL for this CSV file. I'll copy it. And then I'm going to start making a line chart by forking this scatter plot. I'll change the title to be stylized line chart. Now, in the logic that loads the data, I'm going to replace this CSV URL with the new one. Now we're loading in that data about temperature in San Francisco, and all of this logic doesn't apply anymore. Now we have timestamp and temperature. Temperature is a number. So we can use similar logic to parse that number into a string. We can say d dot temperature equals plus d dot temperature to parse the string into a number with a unary plus. But these are the ones we can get rid of. And then we've got the timestamps of this form, year, month, day, t, hour, minute, second, and millisecond, ending with z. This is the ISO 8601 format. It was issued by the International Organization for Standardization and was first published in 1988. It's a widely used standard, so widely used, in fact, that we can pass it into the date constructor built into browsers. If I paste one of those timestamps as the string we're passing into this new date, then it says, okay, this is March 21st, 2015. When visualizing time, it's useful to have it as JavaScript date objects. Therefore, we should parse timestamp using the date constructor. We can say d.timestamp is new date and then pass in d.timestamp. Now we can access timestamp from our row objects and we will get back date objects. The date object in JavaScript, documented here on MDN, is the canonical way of representing instance in time in JavaScript. Okay, now that we are loading and parsing this data, let's modify our index.js to change the meaning of x and y. Our x value can return d.timestamp, and this label can be, let's say, time, and our y value can be d.temperature. And the label can say temperature with an uppercase T. All right, now we're getting something to show up. But notice how our y-axis is actually upside down. The lower values are on top, and then the higher values are on the bottom. Typically, when things are higher on the screen, that corresponds to a higher value. So our y-scale is pretty much upside down. The way that we can fix that is when we define our y scale, instead of the range going from zero to inner height, it can go from inner height to zero. Now the axis is flipped and the higher temperatures are higher on the screen. 
Now our time axis is showing 1.4 T, as in 1.4 trillion. That's because we're using scale linear and not scale time. And I think it's using the number of milliseconds since 1970 or something. When you have dates, instead of scale linear, it helps to use scale time, which we can import from D3 right here. And then when we set up our X scale, we can say, scratch that. Instead of scale linear, we can use scale time. Well, that did not solve the problem. It still shows 1.4 T. I think the problem is actually in our tick format function, which we are passing in as a prop from index.js. When we invoke axis bottom, we're passing in tick format to be x axis tick format. And that's defined above to be this value here, which is left over from our bar chart example. Instead of formatting numbers, we want to actually format dates. Luckily, D3 provides a utility for formatting time called D3 time format. You can use time format like this, where you pass in some specifier for the formatting. And again, Zan Armstrong comes to the rescue with this sweet example. So we have to consider, how do we want to format our dates, our tick marks on our axis? I think I'll go with day of the week. To use this, we need to import time format from D3. Instead of format here, this will be time format. And when we define our tick formatter, I don't think we're going to need any customization. So we can just say x axis tick format equals time format. And then I can paste in that specifier from the documentation. And boom, there we go. Now our tick marks say Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I think that's fine for now. Uh, you can customize that based on your needs. I think I'll leave it at that, and then I'll rename this to be working with time, and then update the description to point to the right data set. All right, we've made a scatter plot that shows something changing over time. This is one step of the way towards a line chart. But I'll leave it at that for this segment, working with time.